Hi, everybody. Hopefully the microphone's working. Uh, so I decided to change this talk. It's actually now tips and tricks for machine learning, because uh, then I would have to know less about what I was talking about. Um, so this actually came from uh, when I did a startup a number of years ago, uh, yeah, a number of years ago now, called Eyebrows. And what it did was um, whenever you kind of came to the site, you started to indicate what kind of retail uh, th places that you liked. And it would find kind of long tail internet retailers uh, that were similar to them. Uh, so just to first and foremost, I don't know if hopefully uh, you guys don't know a whole lot about uh, machine learning. Uh, it's gotten super popular in recent years because I think primarily because of big data. Uh, and it's becoming a very a useful topic in that subject area. Uh, so some kind of quick examples. Pandora is an expert system. Uh, and it's, it's kind of an interesting one. Uh, you know, you use um, certain kinds of machine learning techniques when you do work with things like Hadoop. Um, but it kind of depends. Hadoop isn't really a machine learning thing in and of itself. It's more about what you do with the data afterwards. So most of machine learning is kind of about trying to find what's referred to as like the maxima, maximal minima um, uh, or the maximum. So, like, what, so you kind of imagine a plane, right? And that's why we have the hills and valleys here. And what you're doing is you're kind of wandering around that plane looking for the deepest point, right? Now, obviously, the problem is, is that sometimes there's points that aren't as deep as other points, right? So uh, what you want to do is try to figure out how to make it pop back out of there and go on to the next one to try to find something deeper. Does that make sense to everybody? Feel free to like shout out questions. Uh, I prefer you don't tell me I'm an, I'm an idiot, even though it's possible. So, uh, so that's kind of what you're really trying to do. So, if you kind of think about whatever problem you're approaching uh, as as that as kind of the baseline, it starts to. I, I think it makes it simpler to understand uh, kind of all the various algorithms that you're applying to this. So that's why I bring it up as kind of like a tip, right? Um, all right. So the next one is uh, uh, another problem I ran into. So when I was doing this eyebrows system, um, which is actually an expert system, right? So it would take, well, let me back up. So what it did was it took you know, one retailer that you knew about and suggested other ones based on profiles of those retailers. You can do that in kind of two different ways, right? We can ask the entire world what they think the similarity between this retailer and that retailer are, right? Um, and that would be kind of more like crowdsourcing, right? Um, or you can kind of say, all right, Bob, you know retail. Go mark this up on a bunch of profiles, or on a profile. Uh, and then Joe, you, I want you to do it too. And, uh, you know, another guy and another guy and another guy. And eventually you end up with a large quantity of retail places that all have kind of individual profile, and then you can match against them. So... The crowdsourcing side is kind of more like you have a large volume of data around something, but it's usually like a single point. Um, and then the expert side, you kind of have usually a much smaller amount of data, but on kind of a wider array. So these aren't strictly true. Like, this isn't a kind of a complete answer to what the differences are, but it's kind of a way to think about it so that you know which one to approach it with. So but when I first went into doing this solution for this retail application, um, I ran into the problem of... Uh, I tried to apply crowdsourcing algorithms to my expert system data, which doesn't work right, right? Because, you know, it, the way a crowdsourcing algorithm works is it's expecting massive amounts of data, and it's trying to pare down within that. Whereas an expert system uh, works based on knowing that you have a smaller set of data that's kind of of higher quality. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so those were a couple of things, um, and I just kind of have one other big thing to kind of talk about. Wikipedia, I swear to God, has the best uh, kind of introduction and descriptions of uh, kind of machine learning kind of as a concept, right, and then as individual algorithms. Um, and then Mahout is this uh, project under the Apache umbrella that is uh, kind of like a framework, uh, and then what and then people have contributed all these uh, different implementations of all the different possible algorithms that you can use uh, to try to figure out a way to uh, you know kind of apply AI to your system. 
so just kind of a couple of examples that might make things, you know, that you might see, right? So like there's the chi-square algorithm, which is kind of like you're looking for a kind of a line uh, by, by trying random dots. Um, and then, you know, another one is like neural networks, which theoretically nobody really actually knows how they work. Uh, but basically uh, what they're doing is they're, it's, it's actually using some randomness and then feeding back the data usually um, to uh, actually try to find that same local minima or maximal minima. Um, so there's a, so a couple of them. When you're on the crowdsourcing side, you tend to see things like um, k-means and that kind of stuff because what then you're trying to do is trying to cluster things more because again, I was kind of saying you have massive amounts of data and you're, so you're trying to figure out where the clusters are at all. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to kind of give a couple of experiences. I, uh, you know, I actually had this whole application up and when I originally post the thing, I thought I could show you guys the code, but of course I was not able to find the code. So, uh, oh, it died. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if you guys have ever heard, there's an open angel forum, so we, uh, we actually had enough stuff up and running, uh, and it was, it was working pretty well, and we got all of our idiot friends to try it out and stuff, and we got enough traction that we got selected for the open angel forum, which is basically you submit and then you get invited to talk in front of a bunch of angels. Uh, and so we presented and there were, you know, five different teams and uh, we realized that everybody else's definition of bootstrap and our definition of bootstrap, very, very different. Uh, so every other team there had invested at least a million dollars into the project and we had invested the time we had after work. Uh, so the, kind of the scale of like the quality of kind of the user experience and stuff. Uh, was kind of rough, um, and, uh, and I think the biggest problem was that um, we didn't do a good job of explaining the the story, like the goal, uh, and uh, and neither did the site because we weren't very good at UI. So uh, it it kind of you know went down from there. So we did not get invested in, uh, and we kind of went down from there. That was one of I don't know six or so startups I've done. So. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. It was really cool. And I really actually, the, part of the reason I was looking for the code is I really actually would like to open source the code and just kind of put it up there and ever see if it ever, you know, takes off. I mean, it, it's done, right? You know, why not let it out? So, any other questions? That was it. <laughs>